with Bradley also. Hi, Bradley, nice to have you. Yeah, good morning, good afternoon. Brad is fine. Glad to have you here. Thanks for being able to take part in this. We're all excited to see what you have. Thank you for the opportunity. It's exciting for sure. And Jamie, I think we are good to start in two minutes. I'm going to Great. just work on something and I come back. And I'm gonna adjust my lighting here. And if you are just joining, um, welcome. Um, we will get started here in a few minutes. We're gonna give a give it um, just a few more minutes for people to join. But um, if you haven't already, please introduce yourself in the chat. Um, we have people from all over the world. So it's great to see who's the here. Austin, Texas. You're not alone from Texas anyways. There you go. Welcome everyone. Romania, Phoenix, John from Irvine, California. Seattle, Federico, welcome. Orlando, Herman, welcome, welcome. All right. So again, if you're just joining, please introduce yourself in the chat. We have lots from Arizona, Connecticut. Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining today. Um, we will get started with Oracle Analytics Live here in just a minute or so. We're gonna give it maybe just one more minute for people to join and then we will get started. Wayne from St. Louis, Ron from Orlando, Robbie from Hartford, Jay from Arizona, Eric from Boston, welcome. Robert from Miami, welcome. Nirmala, welcome from Virginia. Another Atlanta, Georgia, welcome. Got a lot of people, great. I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, thank you everyone for joining. Um, or, this is Oracle Analytics Live. Um, and as you've seen so far, if you haven't introduced yourself in the chat, please do. Um, but during the session, if you do have questions, please be sure to use the Q&A section of Zoom. So that is separate from the chat area. Um, and what we will do is we will answer those questions live at the end of the presentation. So here's our safe harbor statement. Um, so I'll give you a second to take a look at it. All right, so we have a great lineup today with Oracle Anal Analytics Live. Um, and so what we're gonna do today is go over the agenda. Um, so I will do that part. Um, so I'll introduce myself. My name is Jamie Anderson. I'm a principal product manager of the analytics um, product strategy team at Oracle. Um, and so I'll start with the intro as I'm doing now, uh, but then we're gonna have the product strategy update, the executive update, the product roadmap, um, a demo of Oracle Analytics, um, and they're gonna have our partner feature with Accenture. Um, and they're gonna um, present about analytics for value, um, cash and liquidity analysis with Oracle. And then we're gonna have another demo with OA Mobile, um, another demo um, with um, FAW, what we call Fusion Analytics Warehouse for HCM. And then we're gonna have a presentation on FAW for ERP and FAW for SEM, so new features um, surrounding those areas. At the end, we're gonna have a poll, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna answer those questions in the Q&A. So from here, I will pass it to Ben. And Ben, where are you? You're in the metaverse. I think I'm in the metaverse. <laughs> I need to stop this stuff. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, 
So I'm going to come back to Oracle and we are good to go. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Uh, thanks for joining. My name is Ben. I'm Senior Director of Product Strategy for Oracle Analytics. I'm going to give you a quick overview on the roadmap. So as you know, we deliver more than 100 features in the past few months. Uh, we provided the Redwood a new skin. We have also conditional formatting, which is a new engine that we are using. We are using also the Mapbox library with WebGL uh, library, which is making all the mapping really, really fast. Um, we deliver other things also like Auto Insight, which is available in LA right now. You can also turn off Auto Join. So we start to put more and more features and it's really, really going fast. Um, for next year, we are going to uh, even go faster, uh, more integration with OCI, AI services. You will have our VP of product strategy speaking about that today. Uh, we are going to see more integration also with uh, OCI um, uh, function as a service. You will be able to use in Oracle Analytics R or Python script. And then finally, next year, we will have the web-based uh, semantic modeler. You will be able to do your star schema directly from Oracle Analytics. You will be able to import your RPD. You will be able to create or manage your hierarchies, see your data lineage, and you will be able to do way more uh, different uh, mapping. Uh, so the roadmap for next year is going to be crazy. So I hope you are going to like the new features. Uh, in the next slide, you are going to see also that we deliver in the version 6.3 a new feature called performance metric. It's what you see at the bottom of the slide here. When you have basically a different visualization on your dashboard, you can now see the performance, how long it took for the Vs to generate, how long it took at the server level, at the database level. You can see the, uh, if a query has been in cache, how many rows from the database has been sent. Also, you can see the logical SQL, the query generation, and the execution log. All of that, it's real time. All of that, it's managed by Oracle, so you don't have to do anything. You just have to click on the top right on developer mode to see that, and it's extremely useful to tune your queries. So you can now um, do really quick benchmark to see how autonomous data warehouse is killing more, most of over uh, database performance. Uh, so we are going to go to the next slide. I wanted to show you that we can still continue to have fun with Oracle Analytics. You can create this type of dashboard like the one for Squid Game, showing the number of viewers in Netflix, showing the number of survivors by episode. Again, best practices is to show the title at the top always put some logo, some picture, use the same color palette usually as the picture, put a footer with uh, what is the data source, who is the author, what type of tool you use, what is the timing of it. And it's always good to, to show that really um, big on your screen. So you match what you do on a PowerPoint slide, for example, the message should be really fast uh, to understand for the audience. So I'm going to say thank you everyone for using Oracle Analytics. I'm going to run really quick a poll to know who is using Oracle Analytics in the audience. And uh, Jamie, you can take it from here. Great, thanks Ben. Um, as I get my video back up, come back. Here we go. Um, so thank you, Ben. And you know, one one comment on the um, developer tools, if that's something that you don't see, you can activate that in your profile within OAC. Um, so you, you just click on your picture in OAC and you can activate that pretty easily. Um, so let's go on. So we next we have an executive update. Um, and that will be by Joey. He is the VP of product strategy at Oracle Analytics. So Joey, I will pass it to you. Thank you so much, Jamie. Thank you, Ben. And thank you, everybody, for being here today. I'll just take a moment because one of the great things I love about Oracle Analytics Live is it moves fast and you've got a lot of good presenters who will be following me. So just wanted to hit a couple of quick points. First of all, you may have seen uh, some recent Oracle Lives that um, are particularly relevant for us in, in analytics. Um, you saw on November 2nd, TK was joining Steve Miranda to talk about the connected enterprise, connecting front office and back office with analytics in particular, the focus was on fusion analytics. So if you didn't see that, check it out. There's a great demo in there. There's some great customer stories as well. The following day, no, in October, we had 
Greg Pavlik announcing the Lake House offering as well. We'll be talking more about how Fusion Analytics relates to Lake House and the great new capabilities you get with the Lake House uh, for, for Oracle Analytics customers. Also on November 3rd, if you go to the next slide, Greg also introduced the new AI services. We're very excited about these. Some of you have seen the new capabilities with uh, the vision service with Oracle Analytics Cloud. You'll be seeing more integrations uh, coming on this in the future. This provides great opportunity to be able to leverage uh, AI services to uh, gain insights from semi-structured and unstructured data, be that language, speech, vision, and then more decision services such as anomaly detection and forecasting with a few more on the way as well. So great, great capabilities to come here. Uh, stay tuned and, and stay abreast of what this allows you to do. It's, it's, uh, it's very compelling and we're very excited to see the use cases that emerge for our customers and partners. On the following slide, we also continue to uh, demonstrate the value of the technology uh, in real world applications. So uh, we can say that the tech is great, but uh, it's manifest within the numbers on the scoreboard on, on actually winning the race or winning the game. In this case, we announced the uh, Warriors player dashboard. This is for the Golden State Warriors. This helps Steph Curry and crew to, to make more shots and score more points. Uh, we wanna continue to be the choice of champions who are able to utilize the technology to actually help them compete and win, just like we wanted to help you to compete and win as well. So other than that, I just wanted to re reinforce uh, some news we announced earlier on the next slide with regard to Forrester. Uh, we were very happy to be recognized as a leader. On the next slide, if you don't mind just advancing it, as a leader in the Forrester wave. Um, this is uh, a great credential and, and we're very happy for the, the recognition and we're honored by it, but it doesn't happen without our, our customer and partner success. So this is really uh, an accolade for our customers and partners who are getting actual value from Oracle Analytics and they're showing those capabilities and the value that, that, that you're getting from this uh, and it's being recognized. So this is recognition of our community's great work. So thank you very much. And with that, enjoy the rest of this Oracle Analytics Live. There's a lot of good content here, so I'll pass it along. Back to you, Jamie. Great. Thanks, Joey. And let me proceed. Okay, so next we have the product roadmap. And from here, Stefan is going to present it. And Stefan Schmitz is the Vice President of Product Management. And his spe specific focus is with Fusion Analytics. So Stefan, I'll let you take it from here. Great, thank you, Jamie. If you let me share my screen. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to fly through this fairly quickly here. Um, there's um, a lot of detail that I won't be able to cover in the next three to five minutes, but I just want to give you an overview of kind of the, the key product um, areas of investment going forward. Um, obviously, we're going to continue to expand our functional footprint um, across all the various Fusion apps. We have obviously two products um, in production today, live um, for ERP and HCM Cloud. We are um, very soon going to release Fusion um, Supply Chain Management Analytics and then CX Analytics early next year. So that's obviously going to be a key theme um, for the next 12 months and, and longer to continue building out you know, new subject areas, prepackaged content. But what we're also doing is we're going to start investing into um, Oracle managed data loads from third party SaaS applications and also Oracle on prem applications like EBS. Right? So we want to make it easier for customers who not only run their business on um, Fusion Cloud applications, but also still have a footprint in other SaaS applications and um, Oracle on-prem applications to make it easier for them to pull in that data. So essentially that means we take the burden off of their shoulders to load the data into the autonomous data warehouse or Fusion Analytic warehouse. And then they can then from there on using the extensibility framework, merge that with the and the data that comes from their Fusion Cloud applications. Uh, we're going to start with salesforce.com. We're going to um, shortly after introduce support for EBS and then um, thereafter other applications as well. Also, as we are obviously catering to larger and more complex organizations, we're going to invest into you know, enterprise um, level capabilities like improved lifecycle management, you know, more support for moving your metadata 
and artifacts from you know, dev to test to production, as well as you know, investments into, for example, for security conscious customers into private access channels, you know, better support for disaster recovery and so forth. We're also going to move very rapidly beyond just purely descriptive analytics, you know, to support out of the box, you know, um, predictive analytic machine learning use cases. So there are a couple of use cases that we're already beta testing or starting to beta test and one in ERP around AR predictions. And then also another one in the area of HCM around adverse impact modeling. So um, I'm not quite sure, but Ash and Manisha may get into more detail on that. And then finally, a more long-term initiative that's underway is to actually look at how can we as an organization, Oracle bring the experience of operational reporting and the analytics provided by Fusion Analytic Warehouse together for end users in a more converged, seamless user experience. So envision just having a single homepage um, at some point where you can access your operational and real-time reports, just as well as your, your analytics provided by FAW, all within your Fusion cloud application, whether that's ERP cloud and HCM cloud. So that's a long-term initiative, but we are already starting to make advances on that front. Now, in terms of the, the actual content um, roadmap, so as far as Fusion ERP is concerned, um, Fusion ERP analytics is concerned, um, we obviously have good support for core financial analytics. We are now getting um, very rapidly into procurement analytics um, very shortly with the upcoming release. We're going to provide initial support for project analytics. So that's a key theme. Um, we're also rounding out support for financial analytics with support for fixed assets. That's all in development already. And then longer term, as you can see here, is, um, we are looking at supporting Fusion Accounting Hub and also risk management and so forth. On the HCM side, um, the next kind of key themes are getting deeper into you know, employee and talent management and development that's on, on the horizon, as well as supporting data coming out of um, payroll. And then longer term, also you know, getting into employee learning, onboarding, time and labor data as well. As I mentioned earlier, supply chain analytics is imminent. Um, the release is coming out in December. And initially, as you can see here, we're starting to support you know, for purchase orders, receipts and agreements and so forth. And then over time, we'll get deeper into that area with product lifecycle management support and so forth. As far as CX analytics is concerned, um, the beta program is still underway. Um, our um, plan is to launch this product early next year, um, initially focused on integrated sales and marketing analytics and um, you know, essentially taking data from sales cloud and in Eloqua, and then going forward, also supporting service analytics and um, B2B service um, and marketing analytics as well. And then finally, on the platform side, kind of cross-platform, cross-pillar capabilities, as I mentioned earlier, more and more enterprise class capabilities we're going to bring to market um, in terms of lifecycle management, as I mentioned in the upcoming release in, in December here, you will see a new user experience, a redwoodized user experience, which I think looks great. So hopefully you will appreciate that. Um, we're going to round out the support of all the um, Fusion um, different languages that Fusion apps support today. Usage tracking is on the horizon and a couple of other you know, key platform capabilities. So very quick run through the product roadmap. And with that, I'll hand it back to Jamie. Great, thank you. Um, I will share my screen again. Okay, great. So next, what we're going to have is a demo um, on the analytics platform. So Barry is going to demo that for us. Welcome, Barry. And he is the Senior Director of Product Marketing for Oracle Analytics. All right, thanks, Jamie. I'll present my screen and great. get going. Okay, so what I'm going to take you through is a, a brief sort of demo, high level demo of what is the art of the possible with the analytics cloud and what it looks like once you get going, um, if you're going to use this in a sort of daily basis. Uh, this is the homepage and this is where you find all your content. But what I wanted to show you was some of the natural language processing. So if you had a question for an, um, that you had to ask, you could just literally come in and start typing here. 
And I'm going to start with something like uh, revenue and discount by, let's say, customer segment and, and product. And you can see this is all live product type. And then you just type it in and the system will figure out based on those keywords, which data set is the most appropriate and renders almost the exact dashboard you kind of want to have and use right here. And this is all interactive. These tiles might answer your question right away. I can focus on those particular um, cluster of image things over there, or I can come down to this one over here and I can even say, let's drill down and I can see the entire um, set of attributes and metrics available um, for that particular um, set of data. So that's one way to start to interact with the information. I'm going to move on and say, well, we can do the kind of more classic style dashboards. And this is a, a cost management uh, example. And we've got some of the advanced analytics coming through and some of the kind of bar charts you expect. But right down here is an interesting one. This is um, actually uh, the natural language generation. So what I wanted to show you here is um, we can take any of these charts and have it render a, a narrative. And it's completely interactive. I can come down here and say, I can reduce the verbosity. So let's have a little more summary level, or we can go right back to the detail or look at it from a breakdown rather and then see it as a trend description. Uh, we can do all those things in there, all acting as if it's a real uh, chart connected already to the rest of the, the, the um, um, dashboard right here. I'm going to move on to another one, and this is actually going to be an example that is uh, leveraging a piece of graph analytics that's right here. And these charts, you know, make it a little bit easier to understand what we're looking at. So I'm going to use this particular ship as a filter. And over here, I can say, well, you know, where are these particular containers headed? And I can use that, select those containers, and the manifest on the right will be updated with exactly where they're coming from, going to the sort of contents. And from here, I can drill down further details within each container. Or alternatively, you know, if I wanted to see where everything was coming from or to and from China, I can use the map. And I'll just come and click on the map. And as you'd expect, now I have a manifest that's showing in the network diagram exactly everything uh, originating and ending in China. I'm going to move on just a little bit here. So here's the next one. This is using, um, again, spatial analytics, but this time not just for uh, you know countries or, or big regions. This is actually a supermarket. And this is the foot traffic that's um, being collected by IoT sensors over the foot traffic um, over a day. And I can use the chart on the left, or sorry, the right, to show uh, how the foot traffic is distributed in the morning, sort of mid-morning and into the lunchtime area. And you can see as the lunchtime phase comes in, this gets a little cluster of density over here in the cafe area. Um, but what you could do is this sort of way of looking information is much more applicable to, to, to see how you could um, address issues around maybe uh, social distancing, or you could see where customers are congregating in certain areas a day and then rearrange your products to place um, a different mix on the front here where there's more traffic. Looking at next one, we do have the ability to have really highly graphical, and you've seen the uh, Squid Game one from Ben. Um, just another one to show you that, you know, this is, uh, it's kind of ugly to use purple, but you can make them look exactly the way you want. Um, full color palettes, you can fit your other applications, your other web pages, and then you can actually embed any of these objects directly and retain the interactivity into those other calling web pages. And the last thing I'm going to finish with here is uh, this one, which is actually an infographic. And how cool is it to come in instead of having to have an infographic developed in a kind of an Adobe program that then once you print it out, it's, it's locked. And then do you have to go through a massive iteration to have that updated? Instead, you can see that all of these charts here, I've actually got, uh, this is a donut and this is a real donut too. These charts are interactive. And again, with the ability to customize and make these look good, you can assemble your infographic, put all the data in, all of these are live connected to the data source. And then when you're ready, all I have to do is say, let's export that file. And I can choose from PowerPoint, PDF, images, you know, whatever's going to be most suitable to your web application or your emailing campaign. And I can choose um, uh, Acrobat PDF for this one. And I've actually got it ready here. And so here's my PDF already generated. And now you can see it's looking very clear, um, sharp. And you know what? If I had to run this again tomorrow, I could um, set up a schedule to have these numbers updated. And then I could have this up PDF um, on the website live updating all the time whenever I need it, instead of having to go through a complicated uh, design process. So that's what I've got for today. So thanks, Jamie, I'll hand it back to you. Great, thank you. All right. 
So next we have analytics for value, cash and liquidity analysis with Oracle. And this is a presentation with Accenture, an Oracle partner. Um, so Brad Genson, you're going to be presented and I will let you introduce yourself and share your screen. Um, let me know when you are yep, ready. Thanks, thanks Jamie. Uh, Barry, some really cool features there. Exciting to see the, the enhancements coming out. Uh, as Jamie said, Brad Jensen from Accenture, I lead our Oracle data and analytics practice. I'm going to share my screen now. Hopefully this works. Can you guys see that all right? Yes, we can. And yeah, that's there great. Thank you. Cool. Um, so really the objective here is to give an example of what other organizations are doing with Oracle Analytics Cloud and Fusion Analytics Warehouse. As Jamie mentioned, kind of, we're gonna focus on cash and liquidity analytics. So what happened during the pandemic? I think, you know, a number of things happened. On the left, you know, there was an increase in cash needs, really focusing on um, targeted investments, making sure you can, you know, maintain those operations, and then at the bottom, there was a lack of cash visibility. So people didn't have that visibility into where their cash was, didn't have the level of detail. And then working kind of way around on the right, forecasting during the pandemic was a challenge. And so kind of around the wheel here, difficulties in cash generation as well. So less cash than, than you had kind of before the pandemic. Um, increased financial risk profile of customers, and then changing market demands. Um, and so kind of this was a, you know, a challenge that happened during the pandemic. And so what we looked at was really how to take um, you know, different components of Accenture um, to kind of drive working capital optimization at the top. So how you could look at your operational data, how you could drive capital visibility, really target um, specific areas and then accelerating kind of that, that cash release and governance. And so we, you know, organizations um, were able to see kind of 10 to 20% improvements in working capital, um, and then kind of 20 to 50% opportunities with quick wins. Moving around kind of to the, the second one, the predicting, looking at cash forecasting. So you, how you could automate that in the short, the medium, and the long-term, um, really to help uh, reduce financial risk and improve that forecasting. I think traditional approaches didn't work well. Um, and so how to optimize that cash forecasting. And then around kind of to number three, modeling out that liquidity planning. So looking out to understand, you know, the impact on the PL, how to optimize your funding. And so really this helped from an overall cash and profit management. Specific components. Um, that, that organizations have used um, working capital value targeting. So really to put that working capital um, to best use. And then kind of secondarily is a control tower, really to get broad access to that working capital, understand the results um, and making sure you track that going forward. Um, then over to cash forecasting, um, enabling kind of that forecasting um, efficiency, um, to you know, better understand uh, where the cash is, and then the inventory optimizer. Um, and then finally, kind of the, the scenario planning and um, the, the liquidity um, decision-making. And then the architecture. So this is um, enabled for organizations that have Fusion Analytics Warehouse, as well as um, you know, organizations that have OAC. We've got two delivery mechanisms. Um, so you can see this, this diagram is based on Fusion Analytics Warehouse. Um, we added in different data sources. We extended Fusion Analytics Warehouse. We added in the data model. And then those components around bank, investment, FX, and other external data sources, and then drove that through uh, custom or extensions to dashboards and analytics. And so really that gave out kind of pre-built capability so that people could you know, analyze their financial data um, with, this, with these extensions. Um, and then we, we embedded data science and artificial intelligence 
and we've really focused on ease of integration so organizations could move quick. How could you use this um, really kind of step one, um, really target in kind of the week's time frame? you could look at um, your baseline performance, identify the levers, and then prioritize um, you know, quick wins, medium and long-term, and then moving into number two and kind of the, the two-month time frame, you could start to deliver this in scale and track those results. And then in the long-term, you could sustain this. Really, how do you manage this over the life cycle? How do you manage your working capital and get better with your cash? Um, this was a quick view. You know, as Joey said, kind of it's exciting to see this fast paced presentation. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please put it in the, uh, the Q&A or feel free to reach out afterwards. Jamie, back to you. Great, thank you. Let me share my screen again. All right, so next um, with our fast paced um, uh, presentation here, um, next we have an OA mobile demo. So what we have next is Matt Malaya. He is the Vice President of Software Development at Oracle Analytics, and he's going to help us with a demo. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and Matt, go ahead and uh, share when you are ready. Sounds good. Let me just um, share my screen here. I need to cast my phone. So um, hopefully you guys can see this okay. Yes, um, we can. Um, I'm really excited to show the Oracle Analytics mobile app. Um, we think it's a, a great opportunity for customers to start, you know, enabling mobile for their analytics workforce. Um, but let me get at it. When you when you land in the app, you land on a recents page, which is really akin to what Barry showed on the homepage. It's kind of where all the most recent content lives, um, things that, that have been recently updated. Um, and we break it down by workbooks, which might be important to, you know, some users. But we know that users have lots of different types of content. So we also list data sets and reports. In reports, you'll find things like BI publisher reports or dashboards or uh, analysis, if you're familiar with, um, or if you've been with Oracle for a while, you're really gonna be familiar with those types of uh, dashboards and reports. Um, we also break things down by favorites. Um, favorites is where most customers go to get to their content because it's the stuff they access all the time. They've actually marked it as favorite either on a desktop browser or in the mobile app, and it's persisted across all devices and the desktop. Um, it's really easy to leverage favorites. You just long press on a, a car, uh, you know, a tile there, and then you can just remove from favorites or add the favorites. So it's really natural mobile interactions. Um, we also have sections for workbooks, data sets, and reports. And I actually used our internal engineering instance because I really wanted to show you, we have a typical customer instance with lots of content. Um, it's often kind of hard to find things um, in this sea of content that we've accumulated over the years. So we have implemented search. We've actually invested over the years a lot in search. Barry showed you some natural language search, which is really exciting. But you know, even just searching for some content, uh, if I type order, it leverages the same fast indexing technology we do for the natural language searching. And you can see all the content that with order, um, it could be order in a name, the description, uh, any of the metadata for these objects is gonna show up. I can quickly filter that by type, you know, if I wanna look at workbooks and data sets, or if I just wanna look at workbooks. Let me jump into one of these workbooks. This is a dashboard style workbook that was created. Um, and you can see on a phone, we're in portrait mode and you know, layout's really important. So we've laid things out in like these stacks of cards and you can scroll through and see the various visualizations. We really want a rich, fluid, um, really beautiful experience on the phone. We see one of those natural language generation visualizations on the device. Um, and I can also uh, switch my uh, canvases here. So this, this um, dashboard app is to have two canvases. I can go in and switch that if I wanted to. And I could change my filter. So this is actually filtered at the um, overall dashboard level. And then also for this particular canvas, it has a product filter. Really easy to do. Again, we understand that users on a phone have their thumb as their primary tool. So when I, when I change those products just with one hand on my phone, I can see the new data get updated. I'm gonna go back and clear that off. I wanna see all the data. Um, and again, it's really fast. Um, the queries process you know, at, at extremely fast uh, speeds and they're rendered on the phone extremely fast. Um, let me jump into one of these visualizations. I'm gonna jump into this bar chart. Again, you're on a phone, you have a tight surface area um, and you wanna get information about this chart you know, by, by glancing at it. So you can double tap it 
and you can zoom in. So a lot of charts are really dense. This one was fairly dense, but I can zoom. And as I scroll, I get really rich response. We've even done some gaming stuff. I have this little mini map at the top. I don't know if you can see it moving. So I can like fly through the visualization. It might not come through that well on the zoom, but you're really interacting um, you know, in a really fast way with these visualizations. I can also get to the data. I can tap and see a tool tip. I can tap the tip. I can move it out of the way. It has physics. It bounces off the sides of the walls. Everything we want to do to make the app whimsical and easy to use. I can use the arrows to move through the bars and understand sales in various regions for various months. So it's a great way to do analysis on the go on your device. We also have this little info button. It lets me see some just some base information about this uh, visualization. I might get to some, some high items or low items really quickly and be able to see a uh, breakdown between my various uh, measures in play in the uh, visualization. So now let me go ahead and switch to a different visualization. I don't have to go back. I could just use this little quick switcher. I see all the visualizations on this canvas. I'm gonna tap on that table. Um, and it, it may be, seem boring to demo a table, but we spent a lot of time on the phone making tables great. Turns out our most used visualizations are pivot tables and tables. Customers love them and they love lots of dense data. You can see there's thousands of rows and on the mobile device, I can scroll through this with ease. I can get to the data. I can you know, tap this bar and I can resize things. So again, we want it to be a really interactive experience that a user can handle and deal with with one hand on their mobile phone. Now, you may want to get to the author's intent. You may want to see how it was laid out by the author. So you can just switch to a layout that is intended by the author and I can reorient to my phone and I'm hoping that Zoom handles this okay, I think so. And I can see the layout um, as intended by the author. So I'll go ahead and close that. I'm coming back um, uh, to my search here and I might wanna also search on order. And I want to look at data sets this time. And I'm going to use this order details, um, final, final order detail, final order activity data set. And I want to create a new project. So I'm an author, you know, not a consumer. I'm an author on the device now. And I can create a new project on the fly. So again, we're trying to make the job of creating analytics really kind of fun and interesting. So we have these bubbles here and I can tap sales, costs. I can tap month. And maybe um, how about um, state? Um, if I want to go back to a more traditional mode, I can do that. I can just check things off, but we really like the fun kind of bubbles. So I'm going to go ahead and tap next here. What it's doing now is it's generating all the visualizations based on these items that I've selected. And if I want to add them to a new project, I just swipe right. So we're stealing things from other apps in the world and we're swiping right and we're adding these because we really like them. And if we're not so interested, we can swipe left and we can not include them in our, in our uh, new project that we're about to create. Um, I've added a bunch. I've removed a bunch. I can bring back the ones that I didn't pick or I can go down here and I can remove ones that I don't want. But I'm gonna go ahead and tap finish here. I'm just gonna call this test and say done. It's gonna create that project on the fly. Should create that project on the fly. Well, I think I might have already had a project named test, so I'll just skip that and um, I'll fly through it real quick. And I will say finish. I'm going to call this like the random characters. And I'll open that project. And we're going to have that same project experience we were just in, where I can see all the rich data. I can go into this chart. I can uh, flip through some different uh, bubbles in the scatter plot. I can zoom in and I can, you know, move to maybe the cluster that is down in the bottom corner here that might be of interest to me. Also, uh, one of the uh, more interesting features when you're on a mobile device is how do we leverage mobile features? So I'm gonna tap and hold on this project that I created um, and I'm gonna say, listen to podcasts and hopefully the sound comes through. But I'll let it play. The for data the shows sales for a total of 12 months. Hopefully you heard that. I won't make you go through the whole thing. But basically what it's doing is the leveraging our natural language generation engine in the platform and it's generating podcasts on the fly. As a user, you do nothing to get that benefit. You just create your analytics or you get analytics shared with you and you get podcasts. It's a great feature on your phone, on your device to be able to get to this data um, on the road or you know, 
um, when you're in your car or when you're on a walk or working out. So those are just some of the features available in Oracle Analytics Mobile and hope you enjoyed it. And I'm really excited for you to start using it. Great, thank you. All right, so next we will go to oh, my screen change. Give me one second. Okay, so next we have the FAW, which is our Fusion Analytics Warehouse, um, which is part of Oracle Analytics um, HCM demo. So um, I think if you've seen this event advertised on LinkedIn, um, Manisha was supposed to uh, present this. Um, she was unavailable this morning. So um, we have Ragu to help present us this morning. So um, I will let you introduce yourself and um, we can go from there. You, you are on mute. Thank you, Brian. Uh, hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, myself, Raghu, I'm the HCM Analytics Product Manager. Uh, I'll start with the introduction, introductory slides, couple of slides, and then move on to the actual demo. Uh, Jamie, next slide, please. A uh, lot has been done so far uh, with respect to HCM FAW. Uh, we started off, of course, in a lot more to accomplish. We started off with workforce management uh, and moved on to talent acquisition, which is based on Oracle Recruiting Cloud. And then, you know, we kind of moved on to talent with performance and goals, check-ins, uh, subsequently to absence accruals and, you know, workforce rewards was our next module that we accomplished, uh, which, uh, uh, which includes salaries, compensation, uh, and of course, talent profile was part of the talent. And uh, moving on, Jamie, next slide, please. Okay, uh, in the upcoming uh, uh, release, uh, which is uh, part of, uh, which is the December release. Uh, Sorry yeah, about that. The <laughs> no so the December release is gonna be on talent review and succession management, which is part of the talent uh, suite, uh, talent suite of uh, Fusion application. So, and uh, going forward in the subsequent release, we have planned for a few out of the box dashboards based on uh, uh, goals and check-ins, gains and losses, team effectiveness. And also, as Stefan mentioned earlier, uh, we, we are doing new subject areas based on time and labor, learning, sensitive uh, data uh, audit, uh, and uh, questionnaire onboarding, etc. So with this, uh, I'll turn over to the uh, product demo uh, showcasing uh, talent review and succession management. Um, Jamie, if I could share. Jamie, can you confirm you see my screen? Yes, I can. Thank you. Thank you. So this is my uh, talent review dashboard. So as uh, all of you know, talent review meeting is all about like, you know, you have a bunch of uh, employees that come into talent review meetings being assessed by a few participants like managers, HR, et cetera. And most of the data around talent review meetings is like, you know, is, is all about like, you know, uh, who has been rated as, uh, you know, who's performing the goals free, I mean, whose uh, performance was rated as high or low, medium, et cetera. Similarly with uh, their potential ratings, risk of loss, impact of loss or talent score, et cetera. So these are common or, you know, conventional metrics that you would get in any talent review uh, module. And, you know, th this is what we use generally have as part of analytics. And what we have done or, you know, what we have done as part of this release is like, you know, uh, uh, the uh, analytics on top of these uh, talent review metrics, which means like, you know, I also have this conventional metrics which talk, talks about number of participants, number of reviews, number of participants, et cetera. And then I'm, I'm gonna derive some of these uh, analytics using those metrics, which says like, you know, what percentage of the workers uh, that came into the talent review met meetings were rated as top talent, which means like, you know, their high performance, high potential. Similarly, uh, do I see the workers with increased risk of loss? You know, I, I you know, what, what is the number of workers that have increased the risk of loss, which means like, you know, they are potential levers basically, okay? And then if I have to analyze my uh, reviews, reviews of the talent review meeting by like in risk of loss and impact of loss in a nine box, 
I could do that. This again plots, like, you know, where do each of my reviews stand? Like, you know, how many of them are like, you know, hyper high, high impact of loss, high risk of loss, et cetera. Uh, similarly, and, and, you know, if, if I also want to analyze the quality of the talent review meeting itself, you know, I would, I would look at this uh, visualization, which gives me like, you know, somebody, you know, what percentage of my workers that have been rated as high risk of loss have stayed beyond a year, or maybe some of those that have been rated as low risk of loss have actually got terminated within a year. So this gives you two aspects of the talent review meeting. One, you know, should I improve my assessment of the talent review meetings itself, or have I done really well in managing these workers to retain them? Even though somebody has been term as termed as a high risk of loss, they're still in the organization if, even after a year. So these are some of the things that I would want to want to highlight. And also I could do a trend of, you know, number of workers that have increased their performance rating versus de decreased their performance ratings. Similarly, I could also do a trend of improved versus decreased potential ratings of workers, uh, talent ratings, et cetera. So these are, these are the trends that happens uh, year on year or with every talent review meeting. And uh, moving on, I, I would want to highlight like, you know, which are the managers in my organization uh, who have workers that have improved their performance rating or potential rating, et cetera. So this one, I'll call out the top 10 managers wherein whose teams have improved performance uh, ratings of workers. And, you know, in, in, in this uh, period wherein, you know, there are a lot of external factors, environmental factors that are influencing uh, people, you know, with attritions, et cetera. Like, you know, I want to understand which jobs in my organization are at high risk of loss. This is what uh, I'm gonna get with that. And also I'm gonna do a plot performance sources potential of workers in, you know, in the scatter plot. And, and you know, the one other important aspect I want to highlight here is like, you know, this visualization gives me an idea of like, you know, which uh, the workers by ethnicity and gender, if I have to understand, you know, which combination are at low risk of loss, you know, this can help me, this can influence me in, uh, you know, in my hiring process, for example, like, you know, if I say that, you know, for example, African Americans or American uh, Indian, you know, for example, are at low risk of loss, you know, maybe should I, uh, should I hire more of them, for example. So these are some of the insights that, uh, that I can get from talent review meetings. So moving on quickly for success, succession. Succession, again, is all about like, you know, planning for your uh, employees like you know the high risk incumbents or like key jobs or key positions that you anticipate uh, levers, saturations etc you know you would plan well in advance so uh, succession management subject area is all about uh, uh, understanding you know how have you planned your uh, succession plans basically so if i if if you look at this visualization you know there are you know close to you know there are various uh, plans created by job types like you know by job income and position but if i look at this one close to 91 of the plans that i have created don't even have candidates so is this a good plan or maybe is this for me to act on you know to understand you know if i have to put the right candidates in the plan etc and successful versus succession plans this gives me an idea of like you know of all the plans that i have created how many of them have been actually successful which means that you know i have identified candidates within my organization have they eventually become the actual incumbents from being candidates have they moved on to become the actual incumbents you know when a candidate becomes an incumbent themselves you know i would call that as a successful plan so if i see like you know for a job based plan i have like you know 119 plans so far of which only four of them have been successful okay and uh, internal versus external candidates is to understand like you know where am i sourcing my candidates from uh, for my succession plans and uh, so this gives me like, you know, again, you know, I, I would want to understand uh, which are the, I, am I creating income, am I creating succession plans based on certain ethnicities or certain gender, et cetera, you know, just to understand, you know, who, who's my top, in, who are my top incumbents in the organization. And on also for each of the uh, candidates that I've selected in the succession plan, I would want to understand their uh, talent ratings you know, whether they're in high performers, high potential, low performer, low potential, et cetera. So that again, I'm plotting in, in a nine box, wherein I say that all the candidates that I've identified, only six of them are like, you know, high performers and high potential, which means top talent. Okay. And uh, so this gives me like, you know, all these plans that I've created so far, 
So this gives me the all the plants that I've created so far and the bottom line gives me the successful plants. I don't have a great ratio as of today in this data. So, but still I could do a trend of, you know, succession plants versus successful plants. Okay, very quickly, you know, this gives me this uh, visualization basically gives me all the plants, the incumbents, the plants that have been created for them and the candidates. You know, one visualization will give, give me the hierarchy of uh, the incumbents, plants and uh, the candidates. And uh, I would want to wrap up with this visualization, which is uh, one of the most comprehensive, uh, which gives you a very deep understanding of the succession plan in one go, wherein I have all the candidates across all the plans, all the plans that I've created so far and all the incumbents of those plans. So this I would be able to understand if there is any particular candidate or set of candidates that are candidates in multiple uh, incumbent plans. For example, you know, this particular candidate out here, Steve, you know, is also is a candidate for this plan called VP Analytics and also is a candidate for the job of CTO. So this is, uh, this gives me a picture of like, you know, where is my succession plan going, you know, who are the candidates and which are the plans in which they are candidates and who are the incumbents. So with this, uh, I'll, I'll stop sharing. Jamie, go to you, thank you. Thank you so much. That was a great demo. Um, and if anybody wants to rewatch this later, um, we do post them on YouTube um, and you can access that um, quickly by just typing in um, Oracle Analytics Live. Um, and then once it's posted, you'll be able to find that. So let me share my screen again. All right, so the next part of this presentation, um, we will look at the FAW ERP new features. And um, Ash, I'll let you introduce yourself and um, we can go on with the presentation. Well, thank, thank you, Jamie. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Awesome, awesome. So Ash Pachpai, I'm part of product management and I focus on ERP and supply chain analytics. Can you go to the next slide? Okay, so I'm gonna, um, we're gonna take a quick look at the roadmap. Uh, Stefan highlighted some of the investment area in his update, but I'm really gonna focus on the Q4 box as we have just released some new features, uh, which would start to show up as uh, our customers upgrade in the coming days and weeks. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Now, when, when you start to look at what came out of this, uh, is this new release, uh, you know, this, there are really three boxes here that you can go from left to right. So we had some new subject areas that we have released, um, and we will talk about that in a little bit more detail. These subject areas are in projects, uh, fixed assets, and procurement space. We have done some really important enhancements to uh, general ledger, payables, receivables, analytics, uh, as well as procurement, which is already part of the content that our customers have. And then um, to the extreme right, you see some additional enhancements that we have done, refinements, revisions that we've done to our existing content. Uh, I'm, I'm really proud to say that this is a you know, very customer driven roadmap uh, that we execute on. So what you see here on the right hand side is really um, you know, based on the feedback our customers have been giving in terms of what additional attributes they would like to see. So we continue to define and revise the, the subject areas that we have. Now let's dive into the, the new subject areas. Uh, next slide. So this is really a milestone release for our customers who are engaged in project-based businesses, right? Um, and using ERP Cloud. Um, Jamie, can you go to the next slide? Um, when, when you talk about project managers and accountants, uh, now they can analyze um, uh, project costs, right? Includes burden costs, bra costs, or uh, for the past and the current periods. I'm sorry, go to the cost slide. I think maybe there's a time lag. Uh, including, you know, you can look at current period or past period, including inception to date and you know, year to date comparisons. Um, and you can uh, look at project costs across uh, tasks, organizations, resources, uh, suppliers, and, and, and the hierarchies. Now, all costs from AP and inventory 
um, I'm speaking to project cost. Uh, all costs from AP and inventory, as well as anything that's directly entered in projects is available. The grain of the subject area is cost distribution lines, right? So you can uh, you know, you look at cost distribution lines by project and GL account. And uh, we also support you know, provider and receiver uh, fiscal calendars. Now, uh, speaking to project commitment, which is really a beta feature as part of this release, uh, this subject area provides visibility into you know, current commitment or obligations uh, for future expenditures that you have for your projects, you know, which could be purchase orders or any other liability you have. So this helps you figure out if your project is gonna land um, on track, uh, is on track or not in terms of cost, right? And including the commitments that you have made to other vendors and, and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, the grain of this subject area is really uh, the commitment line. Um, if you go to the next slide, then uh, what you see is this is also a release where we start to address the needs for our uh, asset managers. So our asset managers can now analyze the, the health of the assets that you have within the organization. Um, you can do life, start, life, life cycle tracking over a period of time, right? At the asset book level, with uh, attribute level details, uh, you know, you can get answers to questions as to which assets are going to be end of life, right? What's the what is the average life of your assets? This is really critical inputs uh, as you start to go through, for example, capex planning, right? So if you want to understand which areas uh, require asset investment, net new investment in the coming quarters or years. Um, you can start to get that kind of insight using the subject area. The grain of the subject area is asset assignment details. And from a, from a timing, time dimension standpoint, and you know, we anchor this based on the asset calendar, right? So based on the transaction that date for specific assets. In addition to asset analysis, if we go to the next slide, uh, we also have asset transaction subject area. Right, so assets go through various transactions during the life cycle, more in, which involves acquisition, usage, retirement, impairment. So you can also analyze um, the full life cycle, including the transactions, and you can get key metrics around uh, different asset transactions and the associated accounting details. So these metrics could be, you know, you could look at net book value, or you could look at proceeds of sale or CIP cost. These are fairly complex calculated metrics. Um, it's, uh, you know, these are also the metrics you, know, you will not find in OTBI. Uh, this is really uh, a net new set of metrics that you will find within, uh, within FAW. It's really valuable for our asset managers. Now, the, the, if you go to the last slide here, um, from, a, from a procure to pay, uh, business process standpoint, you know, the acquisition, this is always the starting point for that process. Um, now with the addition of the acquisition subject area, you have insights across the whole procure to pay process cycle. We already had purchase order receipts and agreements available as part of the, some of the work we've done in previous releases. Um, so now you can look at the efficiency of the end-to-end -end process, right? Uh, and you can obviously get insights specific to that acquisition subject area as well. So with that, I'm just gonna stop here and hand it back to you, Jenny. Great, thanks, Ash. And I apologize for um, any of the technical difficulties there. Um, so the next um, section, and I apologize, Alex, I do not have your picture here, um, but we're gonna have, um, I think, or, or Ben, do we have any additional polls that we want to run, or um, are we good? We just the Gartner one, and after we will do a score the webinar one. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Well, Alex, I will pass it to you um, for the Gartner Peer Insights. Hi, everyone. I'm part of the product strategy team here, and I wanted to talk to you about Gartner Peer Insights. It is an anonymous review. You can let the whole analytics community uh, know what you think if you're using Oracle Analytics, if you're using OAS, OAC, OBIE, FAW, and there is a limited time promotion going on. There's a QR code here you can scan with your phone. I'll also pop the link into the chat for everyone. It This um, limited time 
um, offer is only available for North American OAC users to leave a review. It is five minutes. It's an easy review. Um, you can use your LinkedIn or your business email to fill it out. But we would also uh, love to hear if you're using OAS, OBIE, FAW, we'd love to get a review from you as well. Um, again, it's an easy five minute anonymous review. Um, and we really do take your feedback um, into consideration. Um, the good, the bad, we wanna hear it all. Um, and I'll give it back to you, Jamie. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Alex. Well, from here, I think this takes us to the Q&A. So if you have not already um, and you do have questions, please put them in the Q&A. The chat is not the place to put them, but the Q&A is. Um, we already have quite a few answered, um, but we can use this remaining time to answer questions. Um, but I do thank you for joining today. Um, we really appreciate our customers and everyone who's interested in our Oracle Analytics products. So um, Ben, do you have anything else to add? Uh, yeah, I would say really thank you to everyone for joining today. We are going also to ask you to score this webinar. Uh, in the Q&A also, if you need, you can tell us what you want to see next time. Uh, I know I received some email uh, the previous month uh, about having a demo of mobile analytics. So it's why we put it today and also to get more about Fusion Analytic Warehouse. Uh, I think next month or January, we will show you more about Auto Insight, uh, Web Semantic Modeler. So you will see a lot of new features demo in the, in the coming month. We will try from time to time to bring some partner so they can make specific demo on specific content. Uh, and we will see also if in the future we can bring maybe either a customer or if you are having a super dashboard or super project, let me know, contact us and uh, we will feature you and obviously you will have to present uh, on webcam so thanks everyone we are going to move to the q a if you have any question we can take it now with the team thanks thank you All right, so I'm going to pull up the Q&A here. Um, we have quite a few that have been answered um, already, um, but um, yeah, if there's any questions, please um, throw them in there. And I see a suggestion for OAC um, demo with EPM. That's a great suggestion. Thank you for that. I'll give it some time for anybody to put questions in the Q and A. So, and I um, think there is one in the chat uh, from uh, uh, Manikant. Ooh, the best way to explore more on Oracle Analytics. Um, so we have a few options. Um, obviously, um, you can look online on. Um, Oracle's website, um, but what we can do is. Um, if you want, we can probably if you if you send us um, your email, we can maybe reach out to you and give you a little bit more um, information, um, depending on what you're um, tailoring your question for. Um, ben, do you have anything else to add or anyone else um, on the panelist side have anything to add to that? Absolutely. We also have a really vibrant set of uh, partners that, uh, you know, that 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 you can leverage to uh, uh, explore more across the spectrum. Thanks, Dwaker. And we have a question for Ash. Um, it's regarding um, IDR. Um, can we find more information around that? Where can we find more information? Yeah, I, th I think there was a question around AR in voice processing uh, in with respect to what we provide out of box. So I am going to put a link to the documentation here um, in the chat. Um, and you can you can take a look at that. And if you think there's something missing, right, something more that you're looking for, um, then please do reach out to us. Great. Thanks, Ash. Perfect. Okay. So I see we don't have any more questions. So maybe uh, Jamie, we can we can wrap up today. Great. Yeah.
All right. So um, I guess here's the wrap up. I'm thanking you all again for attending. Um, we appreciate your time um, and your attention um, and our Oracle Analytics Live. And, you know, like I said earlier, um, if there are portions that you want to watch or want to um, rewatch um, previous episodes, um, if you just Google um, Oracle Analytics Live, it's probably the first link you have. If you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you can see um, our previous um, showings of Oracle Analytics Live um, on YouTube. So Thank you again, everyone, for joining. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And if you're um, in uh, the U.S., have a happy Thanksgiving next week. So thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.